Hello everyone, this is my belated look at the newest of LEGO Star Wars Stormtrooper helmets, the dual molded one over here on the right, relative to Stormtroopers that we've gotten in the past. Now, to keep this fair and relevant, I wanted to look at just differences in the helmets, and I wanted to have just an apples-to-apples -apples comparison by keeping things within the cinematic universe. The Rebels TV show, for example, had a completely different design. It doesn't really belong in this straightforward of a comparison where I'm not trying to look at every possible Stormtrooper variant. I'm just trying to show the differences in the helmets that have changed through the years. They've also done different prints for the uh, for the torsos and some of them have had hip printing and they've had different leg printing and also different heads underneath. But the helmets have been limited to just these four major variants. So this is a version of the original LEGO Star Wars Stormtrooper. It came out in 2001. Yeah, two years after the beginning of LEGO Star Wars as a thing. Yeah, it took them that long to come out with just a basic Stormtrooper. This first came, I believe it was, with the original TIE Fighter set as just an additional figure off on the side. That set also came with a color variation of this to create the TIE Fighter pilot, and this is frequently referred to as a mustache trooper because the print for the helmet was done from the left and from the right. Oftentimes the two prints did not match up in the middle. They didn't agree. So you can see a little bit of variation of where they lined up with the, the ring around the top up here. And then sometimes there would be a gap and sometimes there would be a vertical offset between the left and the right portion of the, the mouth print, if you would. Oftentimes the mouth would be just one continuous black bit of printing where the two would touch or overlap properly. So they didn't all have that awkward gap there, but a lot of them did. And this is where it started. They did have the gray printing on there, the dark gray, and that's the old dark gray, and also dark blue for the vents on the sides. Now this shot here is from my review of the 2007 Imperial Landing Craft set, and these were the correct stormtroopers for that set. However, in the 2006, at least marked for 2006, copyright 2006, Imperial Star Destroyer, they introduced this different version, this much updated, much more accurate looking version of the Stormtrooper helmet. And this is based off a so-called hero or close-up model from uh, A New Hope. And it just has the slightly higher brow than those actually did, but you can tell from the mouth having the three simulated teeth that are shown in, in black on the mouth there. It's a very, very good looking one. Used the same mold. They found no need to change the mold, but they just updated the print significantly. There's still no printing around the back, but here the printing was nice and continuous. It looks like it was done mostly in one shot at a time, so they were able to get that continuous band all the way across. And yeah, it was just significantly improved and worked out much better and lasted for quite a long time as a result. I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but it was the next Imperial Star Destroyer set in 2014 in just a regular minifig scale, not a midi scale, not micro scale, and not uh, Ultimate Collector Series. Just, you know, just the regular run-of-the-mill ones that you could get to work with minifigs in stores came with the next variation of Stormtrooper helmet. Now, this one really, really underscored the lines and the shadow underneath the eyes by actually placing lines there, which is not necessarily the best way to do it. They really just tried to accentuate that quite a bit. And this is also based off more of a stunt style or just the regular production style of, of helmets from A New Hope, where they had more teeth. So you can see rather than just having the three here on either side, you can see at least four. I think they were trying to simulate uh, five though, with the fifth one being way down in the corner and actually not visible much of the time on screen. But yeah, it's, it's very clear that this is a different design and it is in fact based off a different design in universe or at least on set still no print around the back and still using the exact same mold. And this one was used through 2018.
And finally, that brings us to the most recent variation, which is the first complete redesign, complete redesign of the Stormtrooper helmet from LEGO. This one is dual molded, so the, the brow line and also the eyes or the visors and also the microphones on the on the chin are all black plastic that's actually molded into it and you see a little black around the lower edge of this as well this one finally gets some printing around the back and this one appears to be based upon one of the ne one of the wider mouth hero variations or close-up variations and this does have the low brow as you can see you know, they really brought that down uh, some some variations it was actually a separate piece of plastic if i'm not mistaken on the on the real things and in some shots they would be a little bit higher on some of them it was actually attached a little bit higher some of it was attached a little bit lower but this is a a distinctive look and they completely changed the shape of it from some angles this looks fantastic maybe a little bit a little bit stretched in the in the chin a little bit too tall uh, at least relative to others it doesn't have quite as much angle as viewed from the side it's a little bit flatter overall it's just larger it has a much larger presence and that brings us to the controversy uh, if there is such a thing of uh, well, this versus the others. How does this compare to the others? And does it live in peace, at peace with the others? Well, when you look at them all together, two of these things really don't belong. The one on the left, because of the split mouth, but again, some of them didn't have that split mouth, as, as I showed, especially with the later variations, they tended, or later production models, they tended to get a little bit better from, from what I've seen in general. They had more consistency there. But then the one on the right has a completely different head shape. Uh, the mouth is the largest of all of them. The brow is lower, which is perfectly fine. I mean, you can see that the 2014 version also had a, a lower brow, and that's just equally accurate. You know, it, it just reflects, or it can be seen as reflecting variations in the real set props, but the the one on the right almost looks like it's intended to represent a completely different design when in fact it's supposed to represent the same basic stormtrooper design which is derived from a new hope all the way through now unfortunately i don't have a bunch of the first generation stormtroopers to do this experiment with but here's one of the first generation stormtroopers amongst a bunch of the second generation ones and you see that it just looks like a slight misprint and if i had one on hand that had the complete uh, the complete mouth area then it would kind of fit in you know it's not that much different from the rest and you could see that first generation one as as being a representative from Empire Strikes Back or from Return of the Jedi because it had the black mouth, but I think realistically it had just the black mouth because they didn't do too much detail at that time. But uh, who knows, maybe they were actually intentionally trying to go for that. Here's the same group of second generation ones with some differences in torsos between them, but focusing on just the helmets here, I have swapped in one of the third generation ones over there on the far left this time just to see what that would look like amongst them, you know, just to, to really start to see the differences and what stands out and why. You can clearly see there's a difference mostly because of the lowered brow and because of that really distinct shadow line beneath the eyes. But it at least does look like a variation here. Still, it still looks like it's... It, it looks like it could be used in there. If you're If you're looking up close, if you are paying attention to the details, it definitely stands out, that third gen one, relative to the second gen ones. This time I have four of the third gens, including one battle damaged one at the, the rear left, and then a single second gen one on the rear right to see how that appears. I think the second gen one by itself fits in with a squad of third geners better than a single third gener fits in with the uh, you know a large number of second geners just my personal opinion just based on what i've what i've seen here to me that just you know that that single second gener just looks like a slightly older 
version of these uh, when they just had a little bit less detail. The, the thing that sticks out to me the most is the fact that it doesn't have the line underneath the eyes. The difference in, fr in uh, brow height is, is not as distinct to me at first glance, but you know, that's just one person's view. And this time I have the third geners plus one fourth gen right there in the middle. So how does that look? Honestly, to me, this doesn't look as contrasty as I expected from this angle. The new one doesn't stand out that much and unless I'm really looking for it. When I get down to this level though, then it really stands out. The, the shape is just very different. The height of the face, as it were, is significantly greater with the new one. It really, really contrasts. It, it feels like it's been stretched. I don't know, it feels to me like a, like a Count Dooku kind of face, you know, a very elongated face. Mixing things up even more, what do you think? I think the first gen one still stands out almost as much as the most recent one, mostly because of the split mouth. But at least the first gen one has the same size and overall shape of face. The new one just from any lower angle, you know, closer to a minifig level view of it, looks like it's not based on the same thing. You know, it looks like it's from a different spin-off, maybe an animated series, uh, or maybe something between Return of the Jedi and First Order where they had made some variation to the design, but you know, not gone full full on to the First Order design yet. I don't know, it just looks very different to me. And from some angles, that new one does look super accurate, but from some others, including this right here, it's just too long and doesn't have enough of an angle. Oh, it, it's too flat. It doesn't have enough of an angle as viewed from the side. Here's one last experiment with the majority on screen being the newest version and one of them back there on the left being the previous version, the 2014 to 2018 version. Now I'll tell you, looking at this here, this view for the first time, for me, what this tells me, what this tells me, my eyes in particular, subjectively, is that these new ones are gonna work out just fine. Because when they are the dominant presence, when they are the norm, they, they are okay. I think that I can definitely get used to these myself. And uh, I would expect that a lot of people would also be able to get used to them. I think that it's mostly nostalgia for the original helmet design that makes this look more correct. Uh, I think the new ones are accurate enough, though I do still feel like relative to the, to the props, they're a little bit, a little bit tall, uh, especially for a minifig scaled figure where minifigures have such squished heads, vertically squished heads. In the first place, these look just a little bit, you know, more realistic, I guess, in, in height. Uh, on a very unrealistic height of, of body, but I do feel like these will work in, in the long run. And for people who don't have the previous versions or only have a small number of the previous versions, let me just take this guy out also and bring in the second gen one as a comparison. That's actually perhaps a slightly better comparison because this version, the, the 2006 to 2000, 13 version does not have that possibly even distracting line underneath the eyes. So I think that this may be a little bit more of a, of a fair and direct comparison. Oops, did I, yeah, I went the wrong way. Although the, the frown, uh, I keep saying frown, the brow line is, is higher on that, on that uh, second gen version. At any rate, I have demonstrated the main things that I wanted to show here. My intention was not to arrive at a conclusion myself and kind of force that upon viewers and say, you know, which is the best, which is better, because I think there's plenty of room for subjective interpretation there. Some of it will be definitely driven by nostalgia. It always is, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some of it will be driven by a desire for Lego things to look Lego-like as opposed to fully realistic. Uh, you know, there's just a certain scale with Lego minifigures and a certain set of proportions that have been defined for Lego minifigures. 
that uh, are unique to them. It's, it's the Lego minifigure look. And if you get too realistic in some cases, if that is too realistic, then that it can actually be a bad thing. And then again, you can just go too far entirely and make things that are not realistic. At any rate, uh, again, I just want to show these and uh, kind of turn it over to all of you. Let me know in the comments which you think is the better design out of these, which you feel looks best, and what do you think about the new one relative to the others? Do you think this was a good upgrade? Do you think that it'll look okay in a, a sea of the others? Or if you have already a collection of of one or more of the previous generations? Or will you be looking to keep them separate if you do have multiples? I look forward to your thoughts. Thanks for watching.